There's always a moment, especially if something you filmed that you dream of returning to, sometimes on a daily basis. This is my moment. I'm standing here in the middle of Ginza Street, perhaps Japan's most expensive street, and just letting everything sort of flow by in front of the camera, waiting for something, but simultaneously realizing that everything is beautiful. This is the story of what Japan taught me about video storytelling. Maybe I should start by explaining why Japan was such a big deal for me at the time, but I could also let myself, four years ago, do that as well. I want to talk about my trip to Japan for two reasons. One, it was my first time in Asia, which was quite a big deal for me. And two, it was the single longest flight that I had taken anywhere. It's funny because almost everyone I talk to mentions that they dream of going to Japan, whether it's for the nature or the food or the culture. It's a point that almost everyone makes when I talk about my own travel there. For me, it was a bit different. I've always been fascinated by Japan, for sure, but I didn't expect to go there so suddenly. And strangely enough, like a lot of other things that have happened to me in my life, my trip to Japan was born out of procrastination. So there's that. To keep things simple, I went to Japan by sheer luck, finding a cheap ticket and going to the country to write my university thesis on a topic that was far past my experience. Human trafficking within the country. Writing for a professor that managed to squeeze me into her thesis group if only I managed to stick out some way from the rest of my peers. And so, I bought a ticket to the country to go and cover the topic firsthand. And I approached the topic within the country with 5 a.m. wake-ups to take four trains to go to Tokyo to hopefully find someone that would talk to me about human trafficking and the measures taken to deal with it in the country. And amidst the few successful interviews that I had and the incredible challenge that was in front of me, I had with me my camera, my tripod, and my slider. And at first, the goal was just to take photos, a few photos every day of my travel. But soon it became this obsession, taking my camera and my gear with me every morning, every afternoon, and every evening, because I realized that no matter what happened with my thesis, I would absolutely make sure to document my first time in Japan, which was also my first time in Asia. And so I did, taking notes of at what point the sun was the most beautiful when it filtered in through train stations, or what was the busiest peak hour at Shibuya Crossing, or when I would get time to visit Nagano and Kyoto and Nikko and so many other places that I had written down for my stay. The first thing that Japan taught me about video storytelling was how filming can keep you calm. Because when I did manage to convince a police officer or a human trafficking victim or an undercover journalist to give me an interview, it was always with mixed feelings. Because on the one hand, there was relief, of course, of getting information for my thesis. But on the other hand, there was this feeling of being incredibly uneasy by the information that was being shared with me. I would always run out after to film and clear my head for the day. And so this is exactly what happened one day. After I finished doing interviews, I walked down to Ginza and I didn't know, but it was actually coming of age day in Japan or Seijin no Ki, as I think it's pronounced. And I decided at one point to sort of take out my camera, prop it up in the middle of the road and just let it record. And I didn't realize how calming this was to just observe everything that was happening through this tiny little LCD screen on the back of my camera and just wait for the first time during my entire travel so far, not have to run around and try and hope that something would happen, but just wait and let things slowly roll out in front of me. This is a moment that I always come back to because whenever anybody asks me, at one point I knew absolutely concretely that I wanted to pursue filmmaking, it's always this point. A moment of complete calm and probably the closest I've ever gotten to a feeling of zen. Now, the second thing Japan taught me about video storytelling actually had a lot more to do with combining video with creative writing. Now, long before I wanted to do anything with video, I wanted to be a writer. As a kid, I remember I couldn't wait at the end of my class to rush back home and sit down on my computer and just start typing stories of faraway places and fantasy and adventure. And I remember realizing very quickly in Japan that traveling to the country was actually the biggest adventure I had had so far. And I wanted the narration in the video to reflect that. 
to not only be a travel film with beautiful locations, but to try and capture the actual emotion of going to places like Nagano and seeing snow monkeys for the first time. You know that feeling that you sometimes get entering new places? Like the world behind you has ceased to exist in an instant, where the thought of pinpointing your location on a map seems impossible. That was Nagano. Not only was it the first time that I had seen real snow in Japan, but it was one of the most surreal experiences I've ever had. After getting off the bus, you come in on this absolutely untended mountain path, precariously making your way down to the actual entrance of the park. And as you follow the golden light that blankets the trees, you come face to face with your first group of snow monkeys. I've always been fascinated by these animals, how much of ourselves we can see in them even in the most remote places. It was absolutely incredible. Or also trying to explain the feeling of leaving Miyajima Island just as the rain is starting to pour and the sky is darkening. Perhaps my biggest error during my trip was that I only got to spend a weekend in Kyoto and Miyajima. A weekend in which I had to be very careful with my time in order to see even the surface of all there was. Even so, it was an undeniably beautiful experience. And in that sense, the second thing Japan taught me about video storytelling was that it was possible to combine creative writing with a travel film, which was something new for me at the time. And that narrating something was a way to complement what you were trying to say, and it didn't have to be distracting throughout the video. Filming in Japan also taught me about voiceover work, and of course, there was much I needed to learn then, just as there's much I need to learn now, but it was the best way to start approaching that style of telling stories. And okay, this is cliche, but the third thing that Japan taught me about video storytelling was the importance of weaving a message into your film. Because, of course, Japan is all about beauty, about endless mountain ranges and valleys and bustling, colorful cities. But for me, the most important, the most emblematic thing about Japan was far smaller maybe in size, but far greater in scope. This is Hide. He was my host father during my stay in Japan. Now it's difficult to make extensive claims about people without really knowing them, but Hide was exceptional. Despite working two jobs, often waking me up as he tiptoed into bed at 2am, he was an amazing father. Never did I see this man smile drop or not jump at the opportunity to play with his kids. Now, before heading to Japan, I remember looking online ages for a host family until I finally stumbled across the one where I stayed. And this is again very cliche, but that family very much became my own family because at the end of every long day, after not getting interviews or getting interviews, I would come home exhausted around 10 o'clock in the evening or 11 o'clock. And there was nothing more comforting than being able to return to an actual home with a family that was waiting there for you. And that warmth and that comfort was something I realized I wanted to get across as the main message of the film. And so, early on, I have this segment. We were driving to the train station one day when Hide told me, after much effort in composing his thoughts in English, that knowing someone comes from the heart, not the tongue. And I stand by what he said. And the film actually ends in a very similar People. way. But in the end, as Hida says, you know someone from the heart, not the tongue. If he'd allow me to extend that thought just a tiny bit further, Japan had the most profound impact on me without a single common word being uttered. Because in the end, although this is something global, something that we feel undoubtedly with almost every country we go to, I felt it most acutely there. That unspoken bond between a person visiting and the people of the country, or a person visiting in the country itself, that warmth and respect that radiates everywhere you go. Now, the last thing that I'd like to talk about um, in terms of what Japan taught me about video storytelling is a bit more complicated, and that's that Japan taught me about how to forget. Now, at the time, as I mentioned, I had never spent such a long time filming in one place every single day. And in that sense, I was certain that I would remember every single detail, whether it was from the notes that I took or the shots that I had made on my travel. And 
of course, that wasn't the case. And then, just like that, I was taking my last train home and biking through the pitch black streets of Machida for the last time. In the end, regardless of everything I've filmed, I still have no sense of having actually visited Japan. Never has a country been swept from underneath me so quickly. There was so much I still didn't understand about the culture, the history. People. At the beginning, this was something that worried me. Before realizing that in the end, it's a trade-off. Every time you travel somewhere and decide to pick up your camera, you're making the decision whether you want to absolutely remember something for yourself or whether you'd prefer to be able to share it with others. Or at least that's what it feels like for me because I feel like I've forgotten a lot of what I haven't filmed. And what I have filmed, I think that I can only truly feel the emotion of that moment while watching it. It's funny because I feel like I miss Japan every single day, or at least I think about it every day. But I'm not sure if I really miss the country or I miss what I was able to tell of it and those 23 minutes that I left behind as a finished product. But, and I think this is crucial, that's the beauty of video storytelling because at some point it becomes greater than you, uh, greater than what you imagined and it ends up reminding you of what actually transpired during an adventure. So, without getting any more dramatic, um, here is to Japan and its endless beauty and amazing people that will continue to inspire travelers, adventurers, filmmakers for years to come.